2021, in my opinion, was the first year that the transfer portal went completely wild. There were a ton of big names, and I've already covered a lot of those guys in past videos. We've done a video on how all the top 10 players turned out, and then recently we did one on how the top 10 receivers turned out. Today, I figured we would now take a look at the running back position, as there were a ton of big time running backs in this portal who were expected to be NFL guys, change their college program, or save their careers. We're going to take a look at what happened to the top 10 guys, what they're up to now, and how it turned out for them. But before we get started, if you're a big fan of college football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you want to support today's video, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now let's get started and take a look at the 2021 transfer portal running back edition. The first guy we need to talk about is the number 10 running back in the portal, Keelan Robinson. Coming out of high school, Robinson was actually a pretty big deal, as according to 24-7 Sports, he was listed as a four-star recruit. He actually ended up choosing to commit to Alabama because of Mike Locksley, and he chose the Crimson Tide over Florida State, Georgia, Michigan, and USC. Those are some pretty big names. He put up big numbers while he was at St. John's High School in the D.C. area, and would arrive at Bama with a lot of fanfare. Unfortunately, he never really got going, as his time at Bama was limited. In 2019, he ended up finishing with 254 yards and two touchdowns before he did not see any playing time in 2020. After that, he decided to enter the transfer portal where he would follow Steve Sarkeesian to Texas. And honestly, Robinson was very underwhelming at Texas. His best year was his first year as he finished with 322 yards and three touchdowns in 2021, but then he would regress in 2022. And then this past season in 2023, he only had 12 carries for three touchdowns. Honestly, the best thing he did was become a return specialist as he was one of the better return men in all of college football. And that's probably part of the reason why he got an invite to this year's combine. He is currently an NFL draft prospect, but I don't see him going any higher than the seventh round. And he's likely a guy who's an undrafted free agent who maybe gets a camp invite. Sadly, I would say Keelan Robinson did not live up to the hype coming out of the portal. At number nine, we have a player who I'm super excited to talk about, and that is Marquis Stepp. At one point, Marquis Stepp was seen as the next big thing. Coming out of Cathedral High School in Indianapolis, Stepp was a four-star recruit and the number 14 running back in the class of 2018. I'm super pumped to talk about him because he's the same age and from the same area as me, so I heard about this guy for years. Stepp would end up committing to USC, and he was expected to do a ton of damage with the Trojans. His best year would come his sophomore season in 2019, as he ran for over 300 yards and three touchdowns, and then in 2020, he'd follow that up with three more scores. After three years in a USC uniform, he decided to transfer to Nebraska, and that's where he was ranked number nine. After getting buried on the depth chart, he only ended up finishing with two touchdowns in 2021, before he would transfer a second time to Western Kentucky, where he would finish out his career. He didn't have a touchdown in 2022, and then this past year, he had three touchdowns. Marquis Stepp ended up playing six seasons and never really lived up to the hype, so unfortunately, he is now the second player who I would say has been a disappointment. At number eight on the list, we have to talk about Stephen Carr. At one point, this guy was actually considered the next big thing, as well he was coming out of Summit High School in California. As a senior in high school, Carr was absolutely insane. He had over 2,000 yards rushing with 31 touchdowns, caught 20 passes for 500 yards and 5 touchdowns, and then also returned kicks and punts. Because of that, Carr was a 5-star recruit and was the number 3 running back in the class of 2017, one year before Steph was. Unfortunately, Carr would peak pretty early, as in 2017, he'd finished with 3 touchdowns and 300 yards, and he pretty much had the same stat line in 2018 and 19. Carr's worst season in a USC uniform would come in 2020, as he only got 46 carries, and then he would decide to enter the transfer portal for his final year of eligibility. He decided to go all the way across the country to Bloomington, Indiana, where he would commit to the Indiana Hoosiers, who started out preseason ranked and needed a guy to replace Stevie Scott. How did Carr end up doing at IU? Well, it ended up sort of being a disaster. Carr got pushed around, Indiana was awful, and Michael Penix got hurt, and Carr finished with 600 yards and 6 touchdowns. While Carr is definitely a disappointment and didn't live up to his 5-star status, he actually did play 5 years, actually had a good amount of touchdowns, and considering the situation he was in in Indiana in 2021, he actually had a pretty good year. Up next, we have another player who at one point I was extremely high on. That was David Bailey. Coming out of Maryland, David Bailey was the top running back in the state, after running for 1,500 yards and 35 touchdowns as a senior. Despite putting up big time numbers, he really wasn't ranked very highly, as he was barely a top 100 running back and was not even ranked inside the top 1,000 players in the class of 2018. He decided to sign with Boston College, and this would actually be a really good move for him. He'd get an opportunity to play alongside AJ Dillon, and he would have his breakout season in 2019, finishing with 800 yards and 7 touchdowns. In 2020, he'd once again become the lead back, finishing with 500 yards and 7 scores for new head coach Jeff Halfley. 
After three solid years at Boston College, he decided to enter the transfer portal. And I can't confirm it, but I'm pretty sure it's because of head coach Steve Adazio, as he left for the Colorado State job, and Bailey played there for two years. He ended up having 800 yards and 9 touchdowns in 2021, before a very disappointing 2022 season. After Adazio became the offensive line coach at Texas A&M, Bailey would use his final year of eligibility and played for the Aggies, scoring one touchdown last year. Sadly, David Bailey ended up becoming a bust, and at one point, I really thought he was on track to making it to the NFL. The fact that I didn't even really know he played for Texas A&M is pretty sad, and he just couldn't make it happen at the end. At number 6, we have a guy who has a really weird story, and that is Trey Bradford. Coming out of Lancaster High School in Texas, Bradford was a pretty big deal, as he ran for 1,500 yards and 23 touchdowns as a senior, and overall in his career, had over 3,000 yards. When it came to recruiting, it eventually came down to LSU and Wisconsin, but he would choose to go to the LSU Tigers. He ended up becoming a top 130 player, the number 13 running back, and a four-star recruit in the class of 2020. Bradford would end up playing very little at LSU, as he had 10 carries as a freshman, and then between 2021 and 2023, had a total of six carries. Pencil between that was at one point a transfer to Oklahoma, and according to all the different articles I've read, he's been in and out of LSU three times, never stepped foot at Oklahoma, and is now at North Texas. I'm not really quite sure what is going on, and if I got that timeline wrong, please correct me in the comment section below, and I really don't know what happened to Trey Bradford. It's a little bit unfortunate. As we now get into the top half of this year's running back portal, quickly be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, leave a like if you want to support today's video, and let me know what year, class, or position group I should take a look at next. At number 5, we have Keontae Ingram. Coming out of Carthage High School in Texas, Ingram was a big deal. Honestly, that's an understatement. Ingram set the Carthage all-time school record with 76 career rushing touchdowns and became one of three backs in school history to run for over 5,000 yards in a career and have two back-to-back 2,000-yard seasons. It was safe to say Ingram was a huge deal, and he was listed as a top six running back, a four-star recruit, and a top 200 player nationally. He decided to commit to the Texas Longhorns coming out of high school, and he dreamed of playing for them. As a freshman, he would actually end up making two starts and would finish with 708 yards and three touchdowns. Ingram looked like he was going to be the next big thing, and he would follow that up in 2019 with a great season. He ran for 853 yards and 7 touchdowns, but then was limited in 2020. He only ended up playing in 6 games, and only finished with 250 yards and a touchdown. His stock had fallen off a little bit, but then he decided to transfer and was picked up by USC. The Trojans could immediately use him in 2021, as he would finish with 900 yards and 5 touchdowns. Unlike the other 5 guys we've already talked about, Ingram became the first guy actually drafted as he was taken in the 6th round with the 201st overall pick by the Arizona Cardinals. Ingram would end up playing 12 games in 2022, finishing with 60 yards and 1 career touchdown. This past season in Arizona, he ran the ball 8 times, and now apparently he is with the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, I'm not going to say Ingram was an absolute superstar, he made it to the NFL, he had nearly 1,000 yards at USC, and actually was really good at Texas. This guy, in my opinion, actually hits and was not a disappointment. At number 4, we have another really fun player, and that is Zach Charbonnet. Coming out of Oaks Christian School, Zach Charbonnet was a huge deal. As a senior, he ran for 1,700 yards and 17 touchdowns, and that was after a 2,000-yard 23-touchdown junior season. Charbonnet was tremendous throughout his entire career there, which is why he was eventually listed as a near 5-star recruit. He was ranked the number 4 running back and a top 40 player in the class of 2019, and would originally decide to go to Michigan. Charbonnet would have an immediate impact at Michigan, as he would end up running for 726 yards and 11 touchdowns as a true freshman. Sadly, everything would fall off for him in 2020, as while he would appear in 5 games, he only ended up finishing with 124 yards and a score. He would enter the 2021 transfer portal, or he would quickly find his home at UCLA. Charbonnet would end up living up to the hype, as he'd run for 1,100 yards and 13 touchdowns in 2021, and then would follow that up with 1,300 yards and 14 touchdowns in 2022. He was a big deal alongside DTR and helped get UCLA football back on the map. He decided to declare for the 2023 NFL Draft, where he was eventually taken with a 52nd overall pick in the second round by the Seattle Seahawks. Paired behind Kenneth Walker, he actually had a pretty good rookie year, as he finished with 462 yards and one touchdown. He also caught 33 passes out of the backfield, and Charbonnet looks like a guy who will be in the NFL for quite a long time and could even enjoy a breakout sophomore season. The number 3 running back in the 2021 transfer portal was Ty Chandler. This is a guy I've heard a ton about over the years, as at one point, he was a super big deal. Coming out of Montgomery Bell Academy in Tennessee, Chandler was wanted by every school in the country. 
In total, he finished with 6,158 yards, 92 touchdowns, and went down as one of the best running backs in the state of Tennessee's history. In terms of his recruiting status, he was a top 100 player, the number 5 running back, and the 79th best player in the class of 2017. Chandler would decide to enroll at Tennessee, where he ran for 300 yards and 2 touchdowns as a freshman. The next 3 seasons, he was pretty much the same player, as he ran for just around 600 yards and 4 touchdowns each and every year. He could never quite take that next step, but it would eventually happen after he would enter the portal. In 2021, he would transfer to play alongside Sam Howell in North Carolina, and in his one season as a Tar Heel, he ran for 1,092 yards and 13 touchdowns. This was good enough to get Chandler drafted, as in 2022, he was selected in the fifth round with the 169th overall pick by the Minnesota Vikings. In terms of his impact in the NFL, he played in three games in 2022, finishing with 20 yards. In 2023, he actually carved out a role for himself as he finished with 461 yards and three touchdowns. It looks like he'll be a backup running back in the NFL, and Chandler has definitely hit. While he was a little bit disappointing at Tennessee, he made up for it at North Carolina and has now spent two years in the league and should have more. To me, that is not disappointing. And number two, we have Demarcus Bowman. I feel like I've already covered this guy multiple times, and it won't be the last time I talk about him, but at one point, this guy was actually a huge deal. As a junior in 2018, he ran for 2,400 yards and 36 touchdowns, and then as a senior, he ran for 1,500 yards and 24 touchdowns. He was an absolute superstar at Lakeland High School, which is why he was a five-star recruit and the number two running back in the class of 2020. He decided to go to Clemson, but after just one season in the Tigers uniform, he would end up transferring. He'd decide to enroll at Florida, where in 2021, he'd run the ball for 81 yards. Things, I guess, were not working out for him, so he decided to transfer a second time, this time to UCF. Bowman would have to sit out in 2022, and then this past year, he ran for 62 yards and a touchdown. I'm pretty sure he has at least one year of eligibility left, so the Demarcus Bowman story isn't over yet, but the fact that he has less than 200 yards and has one touchdown in his career is very disappointing for a five-star recruit and a guy who was considered the number two back in the portal. Last but not least, we have the number one running back in the 2021 transfer portal, Eric Gray. Gray was an absolute superstar when he was running through the Memphis, Tennessee area. He was one of the most ridiculous players in state history, as he was the Mr. Football winner in 2016, 2017, and 2018. He ended up setting the state record for career touchdowns with 138, and ran for nearly 2,500 yards and 40 touchdowns as a senior. Just like Chandler and Jalen Hurd did a few years earlier, the top Tennessee running backs typically like to stay home and stay with the Volunteers. He was considered the number two all-purpose back, a four-star recruit, and the 99th best player in the class of 2019, and Gray had a ridiculous amount of hype when he arrived at Tennessee. For the most part, he was alright, as he finished with 500 yards and four touchdowns as a freshman, and then had 700 yards and four touchdowns as a sophomore. It looked like his best football was yet to come in 2021, but he decided to enter the portal and go over to Oklahoma. He didn't have quite the season everyone was expecting in 2021, finishing with just over 400 yards and two touchdowns. Luckily, he would make it work in 2022, finishing, finishing with nearly 1,400 yards and 11 scores in that one. Because of that, he would declare for the 2023 NFL Draft, where he was taken in the fifth round with the 172nd overall pick by the New York Giants. Obviously, he was going to be a backup, but this past season, he did at least get in the game. He ended up playing in 13 games with 17 carries for 48 yards. He did end up having a costly fumble and also had a couple catches outside of the backfield, but Eric Gray is definitely not a disappointment. He had a huge year at Oklahoma and got himself drafted, which is the goal of every single player. Only time will tell if he actually has a future in the NFL, but for now, he definitely hit. So yeah, in today's video, we took a look at the top 10 running backs from the 2021 portal, talked about who they were, how it all happened, where they are now, and if they were a disappointment or not. Now, I want to know your thoughts. Who was the most shocking player from this list? What's another year, position, or player group I could take a look at next? And before you go, don't forget to also leave a like, subscribe if you are new to the channel, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my video about the 2021 receivers. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.